So there are a number of ideas that do get in, in, entrenched over time in terms of uh, there's a kind of a masculinity to it, that, that there's this Canadian, uh, Canadian men working at the frontier, opening up the frontier to, to make wealth for society. And that's a legitimate exercise. It's part of the, the culture of Canada. Uh, to the point where we, you find in the, in, in, the, uh, in the record this wonderful stamp uh, which reproduces the, one of the first uh, extraction machines that's used at the tar sands. It becomes a national, a national emblem for progress in the country. And, um, but those things become kind of solidified too in our, in our culture and hard to displace. So when you start to see the expansion taking place and some new questions being asked, mostly around environmental issues, some of them linked to climate change and some of them linked to impacts on people downstream, some of them uh, to impacts on the Athabasca River, it's those same sort of storylines that are difficult to, to now displace. You know, if you question pollution issues, you're actually questioning this long history of innovation um, risk, risk taking, financial and business risk taking, and and that's a dangerous thing to do. You know, it's it's an unsettling thing. People get angry about it, and um, uh, I tried to. We were talking about how to how to describe what seems to have happened, and it, at one point I was trying to imagine it as a couple driving down a long highway, and they've been traveling for hours, and the partner who has the map says to the driver, you know, I actually think we're on the wrong road. And, and the driver's resistant to that, you know. The driver's like, well, let's go a bit farther. Or we're just going to go, you know, we've got another, well, let's try to this far or get this far before we even reconsider what we're doing. And the, and the, and the, the partner's saying, well, you know, I, you know, I'm pretty sure, like I'm checking here and uh, it doesn't look like this road is actually going to go where we thought it was going to go. And, and that's, for, in my mind, part of the problem in, of, the, of explaining what's going on in the oil sands today, is that we've come down this long road together. We, we think we're on the right road, and we go over the hill and we kind of realize, oh, it's a dead end or it's a complex ending, and we didn't expect all this. Uh, in this case, the issues around pollution or the issues around how gargantuan the project would have to be. And, and we're reluctant to shift. We're reluctant even to consider weaning ourselves off in a, tra you know, like a, a, a slow decline and making a, a sensible transition to some other kinds of alternatives. Using what's left, let's say, using what we've committed to, to even make the transition. Because I'm not expecting that we would just pull out of the oil sands overnight. But I am thinking, what would a strategy look like of declining uh, activity, making a transition where workers could keep their jobs as long as they could, that we minimize the negative impacts, that we leave some kind of legacy for people living in Fort McMurray who want to stay there, and at the same time we move towards a new energy industry. That to me is a really interesting discussion that we need to have.